It is my great pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker. So you may have heard of Dr. Ray Wynn Grant because you were flipping through Vogue magazine and you saw her featured there. Okay, that's pretty badass. You might have seen Dr. Ray Wynn Grant as you were walking through the Smithsonian and you saw a statue of a living person at the Smithsonian, Dr. Ray Wynn Grant. You may know Dr. Ray Wynn Grant because you were watching the Today Show and you saw the most charming interview of all time, not just of Dr. Ray Wynn Grant, but her daughter and her mother together. Dr. Ray Wynn Grant is a phenomenal leader. She is brilliant. She works for the, Na for the Nature Conservancy California at the Danger Mo Preserve. She studies the interface between wildlife carn carnivores and human interaction. For those of you who have been to Yosemite, you've probably seen that live and in person. She is a board member at Nature Bridge Golden Gate. She is an inspiration. She is a role model. She is a scientist. She is a leader. You've seen all those things. What I have seen is a woman who, when seven months pregnant, went for a hike with me on a cold January night to talk about Nature Bridge and how she wanted to volunteer with this organization. It is my great, great pleasure to introduce our featured speaker, Dr. Ray Wynn Grant. My goodness, Phil, what an introduction. Thank you so much for that incredible introduction. I mean, I am so flattered. Thank you all for being here with us today. Um, it's amazing to look around this room at all these amazing supporters. I've met some new friends tonight. I've reconnected with some old friends tonight. Um, and you know, Phil has done an incredible job giving some special shout outs. I just have a couple of my own, so please don't feel left out. But there are several important people here today for me. So I want to give a shout out to Alan Kripak, who I am sitting next to at my table. <laughs> Alan was the person who invited me to be on the Golden Gate board a couple of years ago. And my very first board meeting was in February of 2020. And now it's now, so I'm back. <laughs> so I am actually quite literally meeting um, many of my fellow board members tonight for the first time. Um, I'd like to give a shout out to um, a person who I have been looking for so desperately in this audience but haven't connected with yet, uh, Mark Reynolds, who is my boss in my real job. And <laughs> and an incredible person. And so if you really want some phenomenal stories of the amazing nature preserve where we work um, long and hard all the time, I think Mark was just there yesterday, um, please chat with him or with me. Um, it is a future Nature Bridge site at that. So it's a wonderful Nature Conservancy, Nature Bridge partnership. And finally, before I get started, I am um, the luckiest woman here tonight because my date to this event is my auntie. Um, she's my favorite auntie. She's my only auntie. And <laughs> her name is Serlene Grant. Um, she and I have been trying to figure out if she attended a Nature Bridge program. So my, the Grant side of my family is from this area, from the San Francisco area. And in the 70s, my auntie was taken to Yosemite National Park on a class trip and has been racking her brain trying to figure out it must have been Nature Bridge that brought her there. And these days, she is um, very involved in local politics. She is an environmental justice advocate in the East Bay. And whatever program, probably Nature Bridge, that brought her out here made a huge impact. Um, and then shameless plug, she is running for um, Alameda County um, Superintendent. So she is on the ballot, Serlene Grant. Um, 
She's been in local politics many times. She's been the vice mayor. She's been on city council. There is a big building named after her that we get to walk through with a lot of pride. So that is my shameless plug. If you can vote in Alameda County, get some more environmental justice advocates in office. Thank you very much. I promised Phil I wasn't gonna talk forever and ever and ever, and yet here I am. So let me get to it, okay? Um, I have a lot to say, but I wanna tell two very short stories. And the first one takes place in the beginning of 2019, so that year that felt so normal before all these years felt so weird. And at the top of 2019, I was at a point in my career where I was finally properly stepping into leadership. And that felt really good. After ages in academia and ages in those post-academia stages, I had some control over the projects I was taking on. Now, I'm a wildlife ecologist, so stepping into leadership meant that an opportunity was presented to me to do an incredible field study and it was my choice whether I took it or not. And that field study was understanding the conservation status of lowland gorillas in the Congo Basin. And I was thinking to myself, well, this could be life changing. And instead of diving right in, I decided, you know what, let me do kind of a recon trip. Let me head over to the Congo and check out these lowland gorillas, check out this field site and see if this is what I wanna base the next phase of my career on. So, okay, lowland gorillas in the Congo Basin. That required squaring away everything at home. At the time I was living in Washington, D.C., flying to Paris. From there, connecting and flying to Bangui in the Central African Republic, unintentionally spending about 24 hours in the Central African Republic because the plane wouldn't take off, and then flying to Yaoundé, Cameroon, driving for several days, eastward into the Congo Basin, spending a couple of nights in a little village on the outskirts of the Jaw Rainforest, um, technically called the Jaw Faunal Reserve in the Congo Basin, and then gearing up for a 14-hour hike from the edge of the forest into the field station. Whew, in the tropics, in the heat, with everything I needed on my back, with a wonderful guide from the local community. So let me tell you that I dove into that experience without hesitation. I was so ready to soak it up. I had been doing this work all across the world, and yet this felt like the most intense version of it, and I was dying to get in there. I was greeted at the field station after the 14-mile hike by a pair of tarantulas who were busy mating right where my tent was going to go, so if that tells you anything about what my experience was like. I spent several weeks in this field site in, the central, um, in central Africa, in the Congo Basin, where gorillas were always one step ahead of me. They were making fun of me. They were throwing fruit at my head. They were scampering off into the bush as soon as I would catch a glimpse of them. And yet it was a very, very satisfying several weeks in the forest, so close to these majestic animals. And as I was leaving, I realized I had absolutely everything I needed to be a leader in this space in particular, in primate research and conservation, and take on this work in a very serious way. And yet almost immediately, when I pulled on my backpack to begin that 14 hour trek out of the rainforest and back into the village, I told myself that actually I had reached my maximum and I decided to say no thank you to the project. So let's rewind a couple years earlier to 2017 where I was leading a different kind of expedition, this time for youth to the Black Rock Forest in the Catskill Mountains right outside of New York City. And Nature Bridge should not be jealous because this program that I was leading has nothing on the Nature Bridge programs. But it was a pretty good one where the aim was to get New York City public school students out into nature and the wilderness for the first time with an emphasis 
on black and brown students from low-income households. And I was leading this group of high school students from um, New York City, and there was a young black girl who reminded me so much of myself on this trip. Her name was Camille. And very much like me, I found that Camille was diving head first into this expedition without any hesitation. Camille held millipedes for the first time. You know, not the teeny tiny millipedes, but the giant ones that tickle your hands when they crawl all around you. Camille decided that she was brave enough to camp in a tent by herself instead of with a buddy and really get that full-on camping experience for the first time. Camille pushed herself to navigate all of the tallest peaks and trails using a compass and a paper map. Okay, really big deal to get kids to use paper. <laughs> Camille was the student who waded into the deepest part of the lake we were working in, coming out, grinning from ear to ear, holding a turtle trap full with snapping turtles who were trying to bite her little thumbs off. Stepping all the way out of the lake, seeing that her legs were covered in leeches as we all ran to her to start pulling the leeches off before she freaked out too much. She had everything she needed to be a leader in this space and take on this work in a serious way. And yet, almost immediately when she pulls on her backpack to begin that hour-long bus ride back to New York City, away from Black Rock Forest, she turned to me and said she'd reached her maximum. And she decided to opt out of continuing work in the outdoors. And the point that I'm trying to make here is that whether it's tracking great apes in the jungle or learning to use a paper map along a well-treaded trail, we are all touched by the joys of nature in different ways. And at the same time, whether it's living in a tent surrounded by jungle creatures continents away from home, or whether it's simply swatting one too many mosquitoes in your own backyard, we're all maxed out by nature in different ways. And that's okay. True environmental equity and justice work is about allowing young people to say, no, thank you, this isn't for me. But the aim is to allow youth to make these decisions from a place of experience, opportunity, and empowerment, rather than from a place of ignorance and inexperience. I am beyond proud to represent an organization that centers this exact ethos. That's what Nature Bridge stands for. Our goal here isn't to build thousands of wildlife ecologists, although that would be awesome. <laughs> the goal instead is to give kids the opportunity to choose how they engage with the environment because all options are on the table. The goal is to instill environmental appreciation and understanding in every student so that they carry that feeling into whichever career they choose, whether it's ecology, like me, or whether it's entrepreneurship, like the path that Camille eventually chose. We must make sure not to hold value judgments on how nature-based young people are or aren't. It's not better, for example, to have been to the highest peak or to have seen the most wild animals. And it's not worse to have only accessed the wilderness through someone else's TikTok page or to prefer a good manicure to a good backpacking trip. It's the education, the empowerment, and the opportunity that are the tools we want to emphasize. What is actually better is to have a kid choose what career, I'm sorry, is to have a kid choose a career indoors because they know what nature feels like and know that it's not for them. And at the same time, what's better 
is to have a student choose a career in the outdoors because they know what nature feels like and they know it's for sure for them. That's what I believe that Nature Bridge creates, opportunity, education, and empowered decision-making for young people across the country.